and it says, well, think of a situation and so forth. But in the end, you find out that ego thinking is situational thinking, that, that this is one tapestry, one simultaneous uh, dream that's going on, and it's the only the ego that separates out the thread and arranges them on a timeline and makes up stories, and this came first, and then this happened next, and this caused this, and yeah. that caused that. That's all part of make-believe. And so, it's what, if we ever see again that movie, What the Belief That We Know, it's the same thing they're teaching in quantum physics, is that, you know, the mind of the perceiver constructs the whole thing. It would, it would be tempting to look around through the ego's lens and, and look around and say, well, I see there's a wooden structure here with some fans that aren't moving, and there's these people that have come from different places, from Iowa, or from Cincinnati, or here or there, but that's not the case, uh, because there really is no Iowa or Cincinnati. Uh, and people have been talking recently about, you know, Hurricane Katrina and what happened in, you know, Mississippi and New Orleans and Louisiana and this and that. Where is Mississippi? And where is Louisiana? And where is Hurricane Katrina? Except in the mind of the perceiver. Uh, you know, we, we did get an email that time, we're like, how, what are you people doing? Aren't you watching the news? Mm -hmm. There in Bumpety, there's a national disaster of catastrophic proportions going on, and you listen, and you sit up there and <laughs> listen to the crickets, and you know, have all your food, your tomatoes, and everything. But there's a national <laughs> disaster going on. Where is it going on? Uh, yeah, and where are the crickets going on? And where are the tomatoes going on? You know, and and where is this place called Iowa and and Cincinnati, Ohio, and all this and that? If ideas leave not their source, you know. They're all in the mind of the perceiver, and you can choose to believe that they're real places, and that they're real people, and that even <coughs> a, that there's some place for us to travel on to tomorrow, or some place for you to travel back to this and that. But, but you start to have this quantum kind of experience, where you start to realize that, that this is all that's going on, and really this isn't even going on. But, but you know, one time I, I was driving through Pennsylvania, and this woman had called me up and she said, oh, it would be so great to just have lunch with you. Could you meet me at this restaurant and I'll tell you how to go. So we get together in the restaurant and she's just all excited to be there with me. She's sitting in the booth and ordering and she's so happy and excited. And she leans across to me and she goes, what are you experiencing right now? What is your perception of the world? And I said, well, what I'm experiencing with this, it seems like a lunch, but Everyone in the whole universe is with us uh, right now, right here. And she said, wow. <laughs> and, and she was just asking me, what's your field of vision? What's your perception? I, and, and I've heard Bob say that even today or yesterday. It's like everyone's with us here. You can feel it in your heart that literally the whole universe is with us here. It's not just a, a group of people sitting around in a wood structure out in rural Wisconsin. You know, that's way too small or mind, you know, when we talk about Endeavor Academy or Pathways or whatever, it's, it's in there. These are thoughts. Pathways of Light's just mm -hmm. a thought. Endeavor Academy is just a thought. Uh, the personalities, the places, the time events in history, thoughts, 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 thoughts. It's just, how cool is that? And in quantum they're saying that you, you basically pull together pieces and you make the scenario. So now look around the room again and see that you've just, the ego pulled together uh, this little picture. Uh, these aren't real people that you're looking at. This isn't a real house that's it's behind us. But if you sink into your mind into this experience, it's like, wow, this has just been selected. Uh, this is a selective viewing <laughs> of the entire cosmos. You know, it's like the old newlywed. Here's a special prize selected for our newlywed couple, <laughs> just for you, as Bob Newhart, or, or not Bob Newhart, the, Bob, whatever the guy's name was. Oh. He, he's like, it's a special Barker? prize. No, 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 But it was like, it's all selected right now, just, it's been constructed, and this is how it seems to look. And it's wonderful to think that this is all that there is, you don't have to bring in the hypotheticals of these other places and other times and other events, because they're all, they're literally all with us now, right here. It's fast.
Yeah, you can't go much faster than right now. That's about as fast as you can go. And what you see in a brother, it's, it's a mirror for you. Really. That's like Bob and I have say, one of us will say something to each other. And we'll say, well, I'm a mirror. <laughs> the other. Yeah, that's very profound. I love that idea because it means you're just looking at yourself. Mm -hmm. That's what a mirror means. You're looking in a mirror. I'm just looking at myself. Mm -hmm. And you feel that. We love is in your heart. And love is all you see. You know, you look at someone and that's all you feel. It's like I'm looking at love because that's my perception. And it's beautiful. It just That's what I have more and more everywhere I go. You know, it started off with a, a small group of people who were called family and the friends who were around at the time. And now it's in my mind everywhere. It's just, yeah. It seems to get, I guess it's fast, but it seems to be all here. Yeah, you were saying the other night, this morning when you said something that something was a joke that Jesus said. Do you remember what, do you remember what? I don't yeah, know. It's a, it's a joke that takes the time to come to circumvent eternity. No, there was something else that you said that, oh, that? <laughs> 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 you know, get that. Time is coming. You don't say the right thing. You don't say the right thing. That's the opposite of the bell. That's the red of the bell. Another one. It is fast. Think back. It is fast. Yeah. No, well, I can't remember. Jesus says when a sufficient number or something, blah blah blah, and I was like, that's such a joke to me because a sufficient number is one. I mean, it's you, you know, mm -hmm. like yeah. that idea of having a sufficient number, the acceleration time needs to, you know, we're going to accelerate time, the celestial speed up, and everything. Like, well, how much faster could you go than right now? And you can't really go. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's between illusions. The speed of light is really slow when you get into the. That's what I was talking about before: the the sound of the crickets and everything. It's just a construct of the mind. But then, if I just stop assigning meaning to it, and my mind becomes very still, um, that's my focus. It's like just just be still as much as you can. Because when I study the workbook, the more that I study it, I see the Vast portions of it are dedicated to the idea that you're just going to sit down and be still. You're just going to be quiet and listen and, or look and not assign any meanings and just let yourself be guided. And the more you do that, then the meanings fall away and there you are. Yeah, so then the speed of light is kind of slow, isn't it? I mean, from here to there, it's like, it took so long for me to see that rug. That's because I wasn't seeing it at all. I see nothing as it is now. Yes, it's, it's purpose. I remember one time years ago, I, I had a small group of students and there was this little hermitage up in the woods of Michigan, near Harrison, Michigan. And, and I would just go up there and be in the stillness and occasionally a student would come up. And at one point, a group of students came up because there was talk of selling the hermitage. And some of the students said, you can't do this. You cannot sell this hermitage. It has not served its purpose fully yet. Uh, you know, we still, we don't want you to sell the hermitage. And then other people were saying, let it go. Sell it. You know, it was like the two camps. Sell it, don't sell it. And, and so I said, well, let's just go inward on this whole idea of purpose. Uh, when you say that it hasn't been used fully in purpose yet, you're describing it as if it's a real cabin or a real house on the timeline. Mm -hmm. And it needs more time to serve its purpose. And I said, if me talking about it, the Holy Spirit talking about the cabin and using it in a teaching session, that is fully using it for purpose. It's just a prop, it's a construct, it's not a real house. 